Hi, I'm Corey Geiger, joined by Derek LaVars, who covers Penn State football for the Wilkes-Barre Times Leader. Really appreciate you filling in on our video here, Derek. This was the first practice of the season for Penn State, and we were able to get a look at the team a little bit and uh, talk to Bill O'Brien after the practice. Uh, one good thing is there are no significant injuries, which is major, I think, when, when you have this uh, these kind of depth issues. Absolutely. That's going to be the main issue for them this whole time there. That's the one, benefit, one of the main benefits they have is Bill O'Brien being used to an NFL practice schedule where you don't, you really can't run guys in the ground during the season. So I think uh, he understands probably better than most uh, you know, how, to, how to keep guys fresh and hopefully keep guys healthy. What I thought was pretty significant, Derek, was he stressed several times that they understand the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. He said it, I would say, at least three or four times, and he said at one point, it's a new Penn State, it's sure. a new Penn State football program. Given the fact that there's been so much criticism from so many people around the country, do you think it's just important for them to make sure that they get that message out, that they they understand everything bad that happened here, mm -hmm. and they are trying to turn the page as much as possible? Yeah, I think so. Especially, uh, yeah, because there's always going to be some negative feedback, especially I and mean, we're still not that far away from all this happening. I know it seems like five years already, but. Uh, yeah, especially, you know, you had some negative backlash from some people with the rally, the rise and rally from last week saying, oh, you know, these people don't get it, you know, there's, but yeah, right. I, I think they're trying, I think this is just sort of his way of saying, hey, look, like, we can, it can be both, you know, we can, you know, as a, we can still support our team and show passion, but still, you know, understand, as he said, why we're in this position. I think that's a great point, because these terrible things happened here, and lives were changed and I know some people may think that Penn State football should just go away forever but you made yeah. a good point you can have both you can turn the page you can move forward you can do things in the community and show everyone around the country that the university is changing but you can still also have a successful hopefully down the road football program and have people support that football program it's not like this culture thing that people keep talking yeah. about that, you know that that's everywhere you can have both and still try to move forward yeah, and I, yeah, it, that, that word gets thrown up uh, mostly ironically or mockingly now, especially from Penn State fans. Because, yeah, I mean, regardless of what happens or what benefits uh, come out of the awareness of child abuse and such things, well, that the overarching culture of college football in this country isn't going to change. I think everyone's in agreement with that. You know, uh, you, you know things that, you know, Alabama and LSU aren't going to change, you know, change the, how they do things I mean, because, of, because of all this. But so it's... Uh, yeah, that, that, that culture word's definitely been thrown around a lot since the sanctions came down. The depth will be something that will be uh, talked about significantly, but the, the transfers, mm -hmm. Justin Brown leaving, I'm, I'm guessing it's because he thinks he can get a better shot at the NFL and play with Landry Jones and all that. And I don't begrudge any of these kids for leaving. And that one surprised me. Sure. Obviously, sure. Silas Red huge, and Anthony Ferris huge, and he did oh, that sure. for Absolutely. some personal reasons. But when you take a look at those three specifically, and then Kyrie Ford and some others, what just those three in particular, just some devastating losses. I just, especially look at the numbers. I, I, <laughs> has, has been rehashed, especially since Brown left now. Brown had more catches last year than the rest of the returning roster combined. Yeah. He had 35, and all the guys combined to 23, and you know, one of them belongs to McGloin. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, there's a lot of things to factor in like that. But yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see though. It's you know that was under a completely different offense and a completely an entirely different offensive coaching staff. There isn't anything left of that there. So uh, it, it is a little tough to say. Oh, well, they, they only have one full-time starter in Stan Cabbage back from last year in offense, but. It's a whole different offense. And one more thing with Derek Lavars from the Wilkes-Barre Times Leader is this coaching staff, new offense, you're people thinking they can coach these kids up, and obviously, you know, it's kind of them against the world kind of mentality. But the depth, the scholarship losses, the significant personnel losses, well, I thought this would be a good season. We'll have some record predictions later on. But when you take, take Red, Farah, Brown out of the mix, we think we're going to see a lot of new and exciting things. But... How, how do they overcome all of that and, and, and have a um, halfway success? Well, yeah, that's yeah. And it's also important, it's important to, to remember. Some people are saying, "Oh, well, you know, just this one year, they're not playing for a bowl." Anyways, they, they need every bit of positive news they can get there because they need to keep the freshmen or the incoming recruits right. in the fold. Because if you really struggle yeah. badly this year, who who knows who what kids jump ship in December or January? And, and yeah, exactly. And even not even just the incoming recruits, but I believe the way the NCAA is set up is transfer guidelines. You know, a kid could start all of the entire year this year, yep. and if they, you know, finish four or five wins, just you know, throwing a number out there, maybe they say, you know what, I got my, I'm getting my degree now. I got one year of eligibility left. 
I want to go somewhere where I can be competing for a championship. So yeah, it, it's it, they can't downplay the importance of success on the field this season, yeah. and uh, it's going to hurt you know, when I'm fair and brand. First practice of the season is under or is in the books rather, and uh, media days a little bit later on this week. Really appreciate Derek Lavars from the Wilkes-Barre Times. Thank you.